So now that you know how to draw Lewis structures and you know all about covalent bonds, we are going to take a look at some of those covalent bonds a little bit more closely. We're going to be talking about something called polar bonds and then polar molecules and how those factors affect the physical properties of molecules. Here are your learning objectives for this video. Go ahead and pause the video and write them down so you know what to expect. So to begin, we know that if we have two elements, say sodium and chlorine, and we want to figure out how these two elements are going to bond together, we can look at a table of electronegativities and we can see that sodium's electronegativity is 0.93 and chlorine's is 3.16. The difference is 2.23, which we know is greater than 1.74. And so that means that this is an ionic bond. That means that chlorine's very high electronegativity is so big that chlorine will just steal sodium's one valence electron to take it to be part of itself so that it can be stable. And in doing that, it becomes negatively charged and sodium becomes positively charged and we get ions and we get an ionic bond. Well, with covalent bonds, the assumption is, for example, between H and Cl that neither hydrogen nor chlorine are going to be strong enough to pull electrons away. Hydrogen has a 2.20 electronegativity. The difference between these two is 0 0.96. 0 0.96. Well, 0 0.96 is less than 1.74, so we call this a covalent bond. And we just assume, oh, well, okay, in order to satisfy themselves, then hydrogen and chlorine will share this pair of electrons right here. And they'll both be uh, happy. Neither one is strong enough to pull the electrons from the other. When we look at something like Cl2, we don't even have to look at the table of electronegativities to know that the electronegativity difference between two identical elements, the difference is zero. So we, if you have the same electronegativity, then the difference is zero. And so this is definitely a covalent bond. But there's a difference between this covalent bond in HCl, which if we wanted to write it as a Lewis structure, a line bond structure, we could write it like this. There's a difference between this covalent bond and this covalent bond between the two chlorines. And it has to do with the electronegativities and how greedy the atoms are that are sharing these electrons. So there's a slight difference. If we take a closer look at this bond, and I'm going to make it a, a little bit longer than usual just for the sake of, of taking a look at what's going on there, versus the Cl2 bond, the difference in electronegativities is important now. Okay, We said the difference in electronegativity between these two was 0.96. So that's my difference here. 0.96. And the difference down here we said was 0. Well, when you have a difference of zero, that means that both elements are equally strong, equally pulling on the two electrons in between. And that means that this bond is an equal sharing. The two chlorines are sharing those two electrons in that bond equally. Both are pulling with equal strength, and therefore it's like a tug of war between two equally strong teams. Um, the little flag in the middle won't go anywhere. It'll just be stuck. So this is, a, this is what we call a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar 
covalent means that the sharing is equal enough that neither element is pulling the electrons towards itself any more than the other. But in this bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine, with a difference in electronegativity of very close to one, almost halfway, it's actually a little bit more than halfway to 1.74, that means that this sharing in between these two elements is not equal. It's an unequal sharing. In fact, the chlorine is pulling on these electrons a little bit more. The electrons are sort of moving towards chlorine in this bond because chlorine is more greedy for electrons, 3.16 compared to the 2.20. So that means that even though chlorine isn't stealing the electrons completely away and making itself negative, it is kind of hanging on to those electrons a little bit more than hydrogen is. And as a result, it's becoming partially negative. Now we have a way of indicating that in a molecule. If I have the bond between H and Cl, and I want to show that the electrons in that bond are kind of hanging around chlorine, I can use the Greek letter lowercase delta, which looks like that, and a negative sign. That delta, delta negative is how we'd read that. That delta means partial. So a Greek letter delta, lowercase delta, means partial. And the negative sign means that this is becoming partially negative. Well, if it's becoming partially negative because the electrons in this bond are going in that direction, they're heading towards chlorine, then hydrogen is also becoming partially positive at the same time. There's my delta, again, partial positive charge. So what we have here is a molecule. We have this bond that has a slight negative end and a slight positive end, kind of in the same way that a magnet has a north and south end. Well, when you have something that has a magnetic positive end and a magnetic negative end, we call those poles. And so this bond is actually called a polar covalent bond. So you might say to yourself, well, well how do I know if it's going to be polar covalent or nonpolar covalent? Is it only ones that have an electronegativity Activity difference of zero that are nonpolar? No, there is an, uh, a, a boundary line that we're going to talk about. And so the boundary line is that if the difference in electronegativity between two atoms is greater than 0.4, but still less than 1.74, so it's between 0.4 and 1.74, then that bond is an unequal sharing. That bond is going to be polar covalent. And if you're going to use the delta signs, like delta plus and delta negative, the delta negative one goes on the atom that is more electronegative. So think of it, electronegative, delta negative. The one that's more greedy for electrons is going to be pulling the electrons towards itself and becoming slightly negative. If we take a molecule that has more than two atoms, say, for example, water, I'm going to draw a quick structure for water, and I'm going to draw water in its appropriate three-dimensional shape. And this is very important here. When you are going to do what we're about to do, you have to be considering atoms, molecules, in their three-dimensional shapes. So water is a bent molecule, so I'm drawing it as bent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the two bonds in this molecule each bond. And I'm going to look at the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen. I can get those by looking at my table of electronegativities, periodic table. The electronegativity of oxygen is 3.44. The electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.20. The electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen is 1.24. Now 1.24 is greater than 0.4 but it's also less than 1.74. And so because it's between 1.74 and 0.4, that means that this bond is polar covalent. If it's polar covalent, it means that one of the sides of this bond, one end of this bond, is going to be slightly positive. The other end is going to be slightly negative. 
because oxygen has the greater electronegativity, oxygen is the slightly negative end, and hydrogen is the slightly positive end. Well, this bond over here is exactly the same. The oxygen is becoming slightly negative, and the hydrogen is becoming slightly positive. So what we have in this molecule is we have electrons moving in this direction, and we have electrons moving in this direction. Now what I'm looking for is something called a dipole moment. A dipole moment is a single direction in which electrons are moving in a molecule. So I need to find not just that electrons are moving, but I need to find one direction, not that one direction, a single direction that electrons are moving in. So in the water molecule, if electrons are moving up this way along this bond and up this way along this bond, then the overall direction that they're moving in this molecule is straight up through the middle of the two hydrogens. And I'm going to draw this symbol as an arrow with a plus sign down the other end. That is a symbol for something called a dipole moment. And a dipole moment is a single direction that electrons are moving in a molecule. In other words, the water molecule has a slightly negative end and a slightly positive end. The negative end, the oxygen end of this molecule, is negatively charged, slightly. And the hydrogen end, where the hydrogens are, is slightly positively charged. That means that this whole molecule has a north pole and a south pole. It's like a little magnet. If a molecule has a direction that electrons are moving, a dipole moment, then that means that the molecule itself is a polar molecule. So how did we do this? We looked at the electronegativity difference between each of the bond elements. We figured out if the bonds were polar, and then we looked at the shape of the molecule, and we saw if there was a single direction in which electrons were moving. Now, the shape of the molecule is really important. I'm going to do a molecule called carbon tetrachloride, CCl4 and I'm going to draw the structure of carbon tetrachloride as it will exist in three dimensions. If you're not sure where I'm getting this shape from, why it's a tetrahedron, you should go back and review your videos on VSEPR theory and Lewis structures. This is what CCL4 will look like. It is a tetrahedral molecule. Now, we need to know whether or not the carbon to chlorine bond is polar. So I'm going to look at my table of electronegativities again. Carbon is 2.55. Chlorine is 3.16. The electronegativity difference here is 0 0.61. 0 0.61 is greater than 0.4 and less than 1.74. So these bonds are polar. The bonds between carbon and chlorine are polar. Chlorine being more electronegative gets the delta negative. Carbon being more or less electronegative gets the delta positive. All four bonds in this molecule have the same polarity. All of the chlorines are slightly negative, and the carbon in the middle is slightly positive. So all four bonds are polar. Is the molecule polar? Can I find a single direction in which the electrons are moving. In other words, can I draw an arrow somewhere pointing where the electrons are going? One arrow. And the answer is no, because the electron, electrons in these bonds are moving in all different directions. They're moving out towards the outside of the molecule, but not towards one side or the other. So even though all four of the bonds in, in CCL4 are polar, this molecule has no dipole moment. It doesn't have a single direction that the electrons are going in. And because it has no dipole moment, the molecule itself is nonpolar. Now this takes practice. Figuring out whether a bond is polar or not, that's easy. But figuring out if there is a direction the electrons are moving in a molecule requires that you know how to draw or visualize molecules in three dimensions. And that takes a little bit of practice. So take a look at some molecules we've done in class check to see if the bonds are polar, and then see if there's a direction they're moving in.